Welcome to the Get an Experience presentation. So, I've said before in other presentations that I've helped a lot of people make career transitions from wherever they are or wherever they were into IT. And uh, a lot of people complain to me that they don't have the experience. Without the experience, they can't get the job. Well, it's kind of a, a paradox, really, because how did anyone get a career in IT? if everyone needs experience to start. So there's a couple of ways of thinking about it. Either they just got a some sort of break into IT and then built up their experience or they did something about it. Now we can't really presume that somebody's just because we've passed an exam like many thousands of other people have that they're gonna say yeah sure you know we'll we'll take you on. It's nice if it happens and I have heard of it happening and I do know of companies hiring people and training them up. There's a, a company I trained several people for recently and they hired pretty much anyone. One of the people was a photographer, someone else had been running a gardening business and they hired them onto their network support team and they trained them up. So it does happen, however I'll presume that um, unless you can find a company that's willing to do that, you're going to need to do something about this experience gap. So we're going to be taking stock, looking at taking some action, and then becoming, how do we become an authority? Okay, so um, first thing I'd like to change our paradigm as, as to what what is experience. So experience, as far as I'm concerned, is any time spent on live equipment. For example, if you're training to become a pilot, you, there's a few things you go through. You obviously go through the lectures, and then if you're training to fly, uh, training to fly a large aircraft, you'll spend time on simulators. From simulators, then you'll go on to live aircraft. Now, I had some helicopter lessons a few years ago, and at the airfield there was uh, light aircraft as well. You, they didn't really give you any simulator time. So basically, as soon as you went for your first lesson, you went out flying, and you recorded all the time you spent flying into your logbook and your logbook's like an official document that you can use and it's a uh, it tracks how many hours experience you have flying various types of aircraft and by law certainly in the UK and I know many other countries you're not allowed to fly solo until you've chalked up so many hours so basically any time you've spent configuring troubleshooting cabling up live equipment counts as as time as counts as experience because if you do a password recovery on your own equipment at home, it's exactly the same as doing password recovery on live network equipment. The same with configuring routing protocols or switching or VLANs. It's all it's all the same commands. Obviously, if you if you're on a live network for a company, you have to be more careful about outages and commands and breaking stuff. But it's the same stuff. So any any time you spend, this is why I don't recommend people spend too much time on simulators. They're okay if you're on a train or you're on a laptop in a, a coffee shop somewhere, but really I do recommend um, you having your own rack of equipment. Uh, we do supply them on uh, my online training company, HowToNetwork.net. Uh, however, you know when you're looking at progressing past the foundation levels, you really do need to have your own rack. Any time in the classroom, if you're configuring live equipment, unfortunately, many training companies now they kind of um, they let you configure stuff, but it's remote. It's still locked away in a server room somewhere, so a lot of the time you don't even get to see what you're configuring. But any time, if you've had any classroom training on live equipment, it still counts. And any time, I don't know if if you like me have got some experience doing PC troubleshooting and network troubleshooting. If you've been asked by friends, family, people you know to come and fix things, that also counts as live experience. Especially good if you've gone to any anywhere where they any small businesses, for example, and I'll come to this in a bit. But any friends or contacts who own their own businesses, if you've gone to do any installation or troubleshooting or given any advice, that all counts and it's something you can put on your resume quite legitimately. What we're going to do is prepare ourselves. So you need to list your gaps. If your goal, and we talked about goals earlier, if your goal is to become a network engineer doing routing, switching, VLANs, that sort of thing, what are the gaps in your your level of skill and knowledge? Don't just um, 
you expect to be handed stuff on a plate what what is it you need to improve on and then next one down you start on them now if you're quite weak on your routing and access lists there's plenty of labs you can go to howtonetwork.net you can buy a book get your own rack and start strength turning your weak points into strong points it's too late once you get called for that te technical interview to uh, you know to say you need to work on stuff so the biggest cliche is what I started with really some people expect the that when they pass an exam a company is going to take them on and give them coaching to through the foundation to intermediate and advanced qualifications great if you can find a company that will do that and even better if you can find one that will take you on with no experience but you can't really rely on that happening it's just a bit of a cliche and I said earlier it does happen however do you really want to be sitting there waiting uh, and be among hundreds of, hundreds of other candidates waiting for this break so action we can take now to plug this uh, gap in our experience. All right, the first thing is I recommend you start uh, setting yourself up as somebody who knows what they're talking about. So if it was me, I'd start off and perhaps get a mini website. A website it doesn't have to be anything commercial, but it could be something that you can point friends, family and people you know to offering your services so if you've passed your CCNA exam for Cisco you really should be able to write access lists and configure VLANs do some basic routing basic switching and lock down a router and this is the just kind of bread and butter stuff that many companies and people want anyway for example most companies don't back up their router configs many companies will buy a router get it installed but I've got no one to maintain it now we're kind of moving into freelance, becoming a freelancer, which is another website altogether. But I'd like you to look at ways where you could just get some more experience, get some hands on. It doesn't have to be any high level consulting or anything too complicated. Offer some services. When you're starting out, you may want to do it uh, quite reasonably priced. You could go and do stuff and just, you know, just for a few dollars an hour. I recommend you don't go offering f uh, freebies. If you've spent several months or years getting qualified, paid for exams and bought all your study materials, why would you then go and offer yourself to work for free? There's a couple of exceptions to that which I'll come to in, in a bit, but if you're doing this commercially or spending a, a, any amount of time doing it for um, even for other people, you really should be covering your, your costs at the very least. The other thing is network. You know, network with people you know on Twitter, Facebook, friends, family, colleague, colleagues. Sorry, delete that. Um, look at who you know and the people who you know. Look at who they know, or ask them who they know. Say, you know, you're looking to expand your experience, and you're offering some services, or you'd like to get some more hands-on experience. Put down your qualifications on a on your website and uh, start asking and people like to help people it's in their nature so you know you can expect some some leads from there some places where you could go and chat about you know getting some more hands-on experience for your resume the other thing is don't just wait for that to happen get in touch with some local companies Cisco academies and training companies and be honest you can phone them or even better go and visit especially training companies and say you know I'm looking for some more experience I'm um, looking to get some into IT, can I help you set up your classroom, can I help help with the other students, especially if you've got to the point where you've passed the exam. And I always offered it to my students when I was teaching Cisco, I said if they ever wanted to come back, cable stuff up, help uh, the students with some basic problems, and I'd always be there as well obviously. Um, just perfect stuff to get on your resume, and you can very quickly chalk up uh, hours and, and weeks worth of experience, days and weeks, that you can put in your resume helping helping people and um, companies set some goals we talked about goals to start with set some goals for how much time and experience you want say you want a hundred like for example 100 hours uh, experience configuring troubleshooting installing uh, Cisco routers and switches and look at maybe how many places two or three different companies training companies or academies that you you could have helped or even small businesses and do a skills uh, a skill summary. So we talked about having a, a little website for yourself, and you could even have a business card or a little flyer you could leave at various places. 
what can you do if you've got some basic qualifications you should really be able to do the stuff I mentioned earlier which is access list password recoveries backing up configs it's all really easy things that if you've done the labs and done some preparation and, and pass the exam properly you should be able to do and become an authority the minute you establish yourself as somebody who's knowledgeable on a certain um, subject you become the authority it's just it's just the way people's minds work so um, I knew when I was starting my Cisco training company the people that are seen as experts are the ones who write a book so as a, it doesn't have to be anything big you could have a, a mini book on top troubleshooting commands a student recently he, uh, sent me a message on the forum with all of these show commands for the that he used while he was doing the labs and for the exam well, it's so easy to turn this into a little book you can go to lulu.com or other small self publishing companies you can upload a PDF and get a cover designed for like a hundred dollars, get it proofread, and all of a sudden you're a published author. Ebooks you can uh, have available. You can, if you go to paulbrowning.com, that leads to all sorts of sites with all sorts of ebooks from ten pages up to several hundred. If you're going to um, be going for interviews, it's a really good idea for you to have a, a book of your own. Uh, like I said, it could just be a small pamphlet or something on top troubleshooting techniques or how to do password recoveries or whatever, whatever you can do. If you get it printed, if you handed that over in, a, in an interview and had it on your resume, uh, I spoke on an earlier presentation about uh, packaging yourself, that's really going to make you stand out from the crowd and certainly will will make you um, help you make the shortlist for the sort of people that would uh, be hired for a job. Start your own newsletter, really easy to do, a little tip of the week. I know many students who are studying, even studying for the CCNA, they'll start a little blog on uh, their experience for studying and for the Cisco exam and um, comments on labs. Really easy to do with free blogging software like WordPress. You can submit articles and write a few articles. They only need to be 100 words or 200 words because e articles tend to be quite short as opposed to white papers. You can submit them to easy in articles or for magazines for printing or even talk about your experience of studying and your experience of the exam. A little blog I mentioned earlier you can blog for free on wordpress.org and you can uh, have really nice looking professional websites for nothing or just for like ten twenty dollars you can uh, download designs. On your blog you can feature tips and ideas and study study tools and all sorts of stuff like that. Again this is you establishing yourself as somebody who knows what they're talking about and it will basically counter counteract many of the objections that your employer may have, i.e. do you know do you know what you're doing? And teach. You don't have to stand in front of a classroom but you can teach basic networking to somebody, a friend, you can you could easily go to the companies I mentioned earlier or the academies or small classrooms and say listen can I do a presentation on subnetting uh, if you pass the CCNA you should be able to do subnetting and I've got the easy way to subnet on how to network.net go and teach something it just basically establishes you as somebody I said who, who knows what they're talking about who can uh, learn information and then share it with other people and actually do uh, actually do the job so I hope that's given you a few ideas. It's a pretty short presentation, but at the end of the day, it's down to you to get over this perceived uh, lack of experience, take stock of what you already do know, look at your weaknesses, and then target those weaknesses either by doing stuff for local academies, for local businesses, get a website up and start blogging, get a, a mini book published. You can publish books for like $10, $15 each and at lulu.com you only need to get one book printed at a time if you're going to do that if you go to um, internet-rich.com I've got um, some articles on how to self-publish your own books okay so I hope that's helped and I'll see you on the next presentation